Ooh, look how fancy those look. That's for you. Thank you. A little cold brew on a warm spring afternoon. Ooh, this looks so nice. All right, maybe a little ching ching. 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 There's two types of people in this world, those who eat to live and those who live to eat. We're Paul and Benny, and we live to eat. So that's what we're doing today, cold brew. So today we're doing cold brew. Mm, that's nice. Mm. It's getting warm out, and that means it's cold brew time. But here in Phoenix, Benny drinks cold beer, brew all year long. Pretty much. Cold beer. Cold beer. And, and cold and cold beer. <laughs> All year long. So what some people might not know is that you had a coffee business for quite a few years. Yes. Theo Ben's Theo coffee, coffee here in Phoenix, Arizona. And we got a lot of questions about coffee. Is it okay if we just go through a couple FAQs real quick? <laughs> yeah. Um, of things that people asked a lot. Let's start off. What exactly is cold brew? Because we heard all kinds of wild things. Is like, is it beer? And we know it's not beer. We know it's <laughs> coffee. But, but it's not just iced coffee, is it? So cold brew is brewed with cold water instead of hot water, like iced coffee is. And it's brewed over a longer period of time, usually 24 hours. So that's why you get that rich, smooth, less acidic flavor as compared to like iced coffees, iced Americanos. So when we think of acidic coffee, we think of it being bitter. Yes. Like yes. harsh. So actually this coffee is a lot less bitter than most hot coffees. This coffee is smooth coffee. I, I, I always said coffee without the harsh bite. Now I've heard that cold brew, that's what I've heard, I don't know if it's actually true, okay. has way more caffeine than just making a pot of coffee at home. Mm. Is it true or false? Both. So the thing about cold brew is it's made into a concentrate. So you put way more coffee beans compared to like a regular brew coffee. So therefore it's way more concentrated. But the thing with cold brew is you must cut it with something. If you drink it straight, <laughs> that is a lot of caffeine. So if you need that, that morning wake up, go for it straight. If you just want something more on the lines that you're used to, as far as caffeine intake goes, cut it with something. Do half cold brew and half water and you'll have a smooth brew every time. Smooth, a smooth drink every time. I see lots of equipment online for making cold brew. Yes. I see socks, I see pots, <laughs> I see carafes, I see overnight makers. Yes. What do you really need to make really good cold brew? So to make delicious cold brew at home, you really only need three things. Uh, your favorite coffee, a bucket to hold or a container to hold about a gallon and a half of liquid and a strainer. And this is important because you do need a fine mesh strainer. And I suggest you either get one online or go to your local Asian market because they will have them there. Highly recommend that. It makes a very smooth cup. Definitely a good suggestion. No upside down this, take out this, <laughs> squeeze that. I mean, really it's super simple. It's a lot more simple than most people think. So Benny, since you don't need any really special equipment to make delicious cold brew at home, what do we do? So one of the most important things about this whole process is the coffee that you choose. Not necessarily the flavor, but the grind of the coffee. I see. You're going to want to have it between drip and French press. Grind more towards the French press. And if you're not familiar with those terms, um, your standard bag of coffee that you buy already ground at the store will be totally fine. So you put that bag of coffee in the bucket you pour about two to three cups of water over your, over your grounds, just enough to get them to the consistency of wet sand and okay. to make sure that all of them are coated in water. Um, and it kind of gets the process started. And then you pour a gallon of water in the container, close it up, put it on the counter, and let it sit for 24 hours. So now you strain your coffee. And this is where you're gonna wanna take your time. You're gonna do two strains. So your, your first strain is gonna be through a regular kitchen strainer and you're gonna pour all the coffee in the grounds through that, use that liquid and do a second strain, and that's through the fine mesh strain. And that's when it gets out all the really fine, uh, we call it like dust or sand, um, you'll get sometimes in some cold brews, um, that will get that out of your coffee. And make sure that the container you do the final strain 
into fits in your refrigerator. And then you just put that in the fridge or pour it over ice. Um, it's like, honestly, when you do that last strain and you get that first cup, it's so like therapeutic. Like you just hear the water over the ice, you hear the coffee over the ice, and that first sip after 24 hours, oh my gosh, it's just so smooth, so rich. That's it. That's it. Super simple. So I'm saying when people are like, oh, what about this contraption? Socks, bags, no. filters? No. <laughs> no? Machines? No, none of that. Wow. None of that. What about the special pitcher that has a filter in the middle? No, 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 nothing. I mean, you can use those and they come with instructions. The only thing I don't like about those is they make a lot less coffee. This makes a full gallon and you're going to have it for a full two weeks. Okay. It makes your life way easier if you make it in large amounts over making it in, you know, cup by cup. It's super, if you're gonna spend 24 hours making something, make it worth Very two weeks. true. Yeah. Very true. And one other question, it takes obviously some time to make it. It's yeah. better to make it in a large batch. Once I make this big batch of coffee, like a whole gallon mm -hmm. of concentrate, let's say, how long can I keep that? That's a good question. As long as you don't cut it, meaning you don't add anything to it, whether it be water or cream, you can keep that up for up to two weeks in the fridge. And it'll probably go faster than that. That's meaning good. you'll drink it faster than that. <laughs> but overall, cold brew is so simple, so easy to make and it's delicious. It's one of those easy, fun, delicious recipes that anyone can do, and you have it for two weeks in your fridge. It's totally worth it. And that's why I brought this today. I wanted to serve you a drink so you so can good. really taste how smooth, how rich the coffee it is. I did add, it, got a little extra fancy, and I added um, some shaking cream and sugar um, on the top. That is a really simple recipe. Um, you can also add some cream cheese foam on top, Ooh, which the is best. so delicious with a nice, cold brew drink, um, which actually we'll have links to those in the video and check those out and how to make those. I wanna see you try this recipe. Let me know um, what you think of it. If you have any tweaks, updates, any kind of cold brew toppings that you love, let us know. And remember, you don't have to go to a fancy coffee shop to get this delicious cold brew drink. It's easy, fun, and delicious to make. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe even turn on notifications so we can continue making these videos. Yes. I'm Paul. I'm Benny. And as always, we're grateful for our coffee. And we're grateful for you watching. Bye. Oh, and remember, if you want to make a delicious cold brew drink like this, make sure you watch our cream cheese foam topping video. So good. Let's do a real cheers. Let's do a cheers. Ding. There you go. Is it weird that I would say ding? No, I like it. It's just silly. Okay.